Cool, 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 yo. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the callbacks, appearances, and Easter eggs included throughout the 30th season of Power Rangers. Needless to say, you can expect major spoilers ahead. <laughs> Unleash the power! Dino Charge, Dark Ranger! Number 10, Zordnia. The very first shot in the season features a callback that even Ranger historians had to do a double take. We zoom in on the Rangers battling Zed's forces on the planet Zordnia. Some research trip has turned out to be Billy! Sorry! This obscure planet was previously mentioned all the way back in Season 3 as the house of the dormant Shogun Zords, as Billy briefly mentions. It turns out there are more surprises on the planet, as it's here where the Cosmic Fury Rangers unlock their new Cosmic Fury Zords to aid them in the ongoing battle against Zed's forces. It makes you wonder what other surprises could be hidden on a planet so obscure that even hardcore Ranger fans couldn't remember it. Did it work? Yeah, bud. You activated the Zords. Number 9. Mick Kanick. Mick? What are the odds? Mick Kanick, the quirky mentor for the Ninja Steel Rangers, surprised both the Rangers and the audience when he appeared in Dino Fury to help out. We are happy to say that his guest appearance was not in vain, as he becomes a recurring ally to the Cosmic Fury Rangers throughout the season. Those new suits crush the competition! And those weapons, mwah. Now, is that arm Rathconian tech? Because it's pretty slick. There's more. Remember when Mick briefly became the Red Ninja Steel in his debut season? Well, once again, he gets a chance to don the red suit and even pilot the Zords to offer more help on the battlefield. Oh, I love the feel of Ninja Steel, and the suit still fits. Ninja Steel didn't get much love after its run, so seeing it make a comeback like this is definitely a treat. Number 8, Billy and the Wolf. Is that Mighty Morphin Blue Ranger Billy Cranston? He owns Cranston Technologies! Ah, ah, and travels in space! You could only imagine the fandom's excitement to see Billy Cranston, the Mighty Morphin Blue Ranger, returning to action and acting as a mentor to the newer generation. But as an extra cherry on this nostalgic Sunday, when the Rangers go into battle in the new Zords, Billy pilots the Cosmic Wolf Zord. Whoa! <laughs> More phenomenal. All the way back in Season 3, Billy's Ninja and Shogun Zords were both based on wolves. While Billy's well known for his Triceratops motif, seeing him take charge of a blue wolf in an anniversary season feels like a full circle turn for the OG Brainy Ranger. Cosmic Fury Megazord, ready! Number 7, The Command Center. Hello, everyone. Hey. Hi, Billy. Hey. Near the tail end of the season, Billy calls the Cosmic Fury Rangers to catch them up on the situation throughout the universe. The minute he pops up on screen, we see that he's calling from one of the franchise's most iconic locations, the Command Center. More specifically, the newer, more advanced Cranston Tech Command Center featured in Once and Always. Cranston Tech's founder calls me a master. Oh, if dinosaurs could blush. We even see Zordon's empty tube in the background, and Alpha at the control panels doing what he does best. While the original command center was destroyed years ago, its iconic likeness remains alive and well as a symbol of hope in the franchise to this day. Thanks, Billy. Keep us updated. Affirmative. Number 6, New Tech City. Naturally, for an anniversary season, we hear multiple name drops of iconic and notable locations throughout the franchise's history. The rest of my team has been freed from one of Zed's prisons in Angel Grove. Zack's hip hop keto really confused the Zentinels. <laughs> <laughs> These include Reefside from Dino Thunder, Nasada from In Space, and even Angel Grove, the city that started it all. At one point, Billy specifically mentions New Tech City from SPD, mentioning how the alien survivors from Lord Zed's invasion are all moving here. Alien civilians caught in the battle are losing their homes. Our forces are having to take them to New Tech City back on Earth. This establishes that most of the aliens living in the city were all made unhoused by the Emperor of Evil, and further deepens New Tech's title as a haven for aliens across the galaxy. 99% of the newcomers live in harmony. It's more phenomenal to know that 30 years later, the franchise is still keeping the seasons connected one way or another. Number 5, Heckle. The only bright spot is hanging out with you, Heckle. Bright spot? I think of myself as more of a uh, shadowy menace. In the Boom Studios comics, Heckle, the reformed ex-enemy of the Dino Charge Rangers, was given a chance to further redeem himself as the Dino Charge Dark Ranger. His suit was based on the unused Death Ryuger suit from Kyo Ryuger. It was awesome enough seeing it in the comics, but fans will be delighted to see that not only does Heckle return in the show as the Ranger spy, 
but the Dark Ranger suit makes its full debut in the show. But after a classic redemption arc, I became a ranger? Eventually, yes. I'm a good egg now. Not only is incorporating elements from the comics a massive treat, but it's also inspirational to see how far Heckle has come since his days as a devious prisoner. From one ex-bad guy to another. Not bad. Someone else can take the next tentacle-related mission, though. Number 4. Megazord Backup In the final battle of the season, the Cosmic Fury Rangers find themselves at a huge disadvantage as Bajillia's forces box them in. However, Billy arrives with the best backup any ranger can ask for, a squad of Megazords. Greetings! Heard the Mayday, Solon. We've got a surprise I think you're gonna like. These include the Dino, Astro, Galaxy, Ninja Blaze, and Beast X Megazords. While their CG renders leave a lot to be desired, seeing so many robotic titans kicking butt in one place is all kinds of awesome. That's some classic Megazord action right there! Even more so considering the Astro and Galaxy Megazords have been out of action for over two decades, and yet it's like they were never retired. Even though their appearance was brief, their presence alone made the most of it. Thank all the others for us, Billy. We wouldn't have got out without you. Number 3. Eltar With Lord Zed back in the Universal Conquest game, he needs a new palace and decides to set up shop on Eltar. Ah, oh, welcome, boy, to my new fortress! It's the chariot of my latest conquest! Planet Eltar! For those not caught up on Ranger lore, Eltar is the home planet of the OG Ranger mentor Zordon. Having Zed turn what was once a peace-seeking planet and the birthplace of his mortal enemy into an empire of destruction is twisted in every sense of the word. Eltar is under attack. Even more so if you consider the comics canon when this was also Zed's home before he became the deformed evil warlord we know today. We give Zed credit for this. He has a good taste for irony. Wasn't your enemy Zordon from here? And this would only be sweeter if he was still alive to watch his people perish. Number 2. The New Z-Wave? Just when you thought Zed was large and in charge, Bajillia swoops in and reveals that he was just a pawn in her evil plan. Her ultimate end goal involves trapping an all-powerful Zed in an energy tube and shattering it, using his destructive wave to wipe out all the good in the universe. Does this sound familiar to anyone else? Sound familiar? It's the antithesis of the iconic Z-Wave, where Zordon sacrificed himself to purge the universe of the United Alliance of Evil in the In Space finale. Lies! Slander! This energy wave is the intellectual property of Squid Ink Inc. It destroys good, not evil. There's no similarity. That sacrifice was a monumental moment for the franchise, and now it's inspired a monstrous CEO to pull an inverse of it? The irony really is strong with this season. It's gonna explode and release an evil energy wave. Like the inverse of Zordon's wave. All that's good in the universe wiped out. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Rita Repulsa. Rita Repulsa returns as an allusion to Torment Zed. That voice! Rita! I told you not to bother me at work! Ah, poor baby! Heckle's Helmet. Heckle's Helmet is the repainted Navy version of his Sentai counterparts. I'd suggest learning some good manners. <laughs> Sleepy cuffs? Your occupation is over. Unused monster cameos. Some of Zed's minions are unused Sentai monsters. You all work for me now. A countdown to destruction. A cheeky name drop of the In Space finale. A countdown to destruction? General Shaw. The Beast Morphers mentor delivers a hopeful message at a press conference. Let me assure you, Earth stands united and defiant. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. May the Power Protect You Since the Mighty Morphin years, the phrase May the Power Protect You has been a staple of the franchise and Zordon's iconic catchphrase. Very well then, let the power protect you. While Ion is trapped in the void, we meet a ghostly figure resembling Zato who utters that very catchphrase, reminiscing how he used to say it. There's something I used to say in times such as these. May the power protect you. So this basically confirms what Billy thought in Once and Always, that Zordon is indeed still out there in some form, watching as his saying keeps inspiring rangers across the galaxy. This is further proved as the phrase is turned into a heartwarming song to close out the season. 
a fitting conclusion to celebrate 30 years of Power Rangers. No matter how far it you. Any cosmic gems we missed? Let us know in the comments. Until next time, Rangers. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.